peace, peaceful, 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 peace, peaceful, 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 peace, peaceful, 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 peace, peaceful, 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 that a person is closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sajda. And this is the time you should increase your supplication. Peaceful, 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 peace. Peaceful, 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 peace. Who is better in speed than one who invites to the way of thy Lord? Works righteousness and says the Rabbi. Peaceful, 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 peace. Peaceful, 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 peace. Since the musical instruments are haram, a human being imitating the haram musical instrument, according to scholars, is also haram. Peaceful, peaceful, peace. Peaceful, 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 peace. Peaceful, 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 peace. The next question is from Tahir Sultan from United Kingdom. Is it allowed to have pension after one has retired from a government job? As far as pension is concerned, there is nothing wrong in receiving pension, whether you are doing a government job or from a private company. But the only point to be noted is that most of the pensions that are given, whether by the government or whether by private companies, they involve interest and riba. Because most of the companies or government, when the pension is deducted from the salary of the employee along with a percentage given by the employer, this money is kept in fixed deposit in banks or in money instruments which earn interest. And later on after you retire, you start getting benefit from this. As we know very well that interest is haram. And Allah clearly mentioned in the glorious Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 278 and 279, that those who give up not the demands of riba, of interest, Take notice of a war from Allah and His Rasul. So interest is a major sin. Not only is it a major sin, the Quran says Allah and His Rasul will wage a war against you. And in the book, the Qabair, the major sins, Imam al dhabi lists interest as the twelfth major sin. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, it's mentioned in Hadith of Musadak al-Hakim, that the lowest level of riba is like doing zina with your mother. So because of this, if that pension amount that you receive involves riba, then we should try and take out that element of riba. Because you may not be involving yourself in riba, but your employer may be. So if someone is forcing riba on you, what you can do is you can calculate what is the principal amount which is from your salary, what is the principal amount which your employer has put and what is the element of riba. So when you get this pension, after you calculate, if you get rid of this element of riba, calculate the percentage, it may be 10%, 20%, 30%, whatever the percentage is, give this away in charity to the poor people for some noble cause because this riba has come involuntary to you. Voluntary, taking riba and giving charity, even that is haram. But involuntary, if somebody is forcing you, it is your money. It is your right that the employer is giving you benefit. But if it's involving with the principal amount, the Quran says you can keep the principal amount and give away the riba. So that riba portion, percentage from the pension, if it is involving the interest, should be given in charity. But the best would be if the pension is from Islamic source. In the Islamic countries that are following the Islamic Sharia, they put it in taqaful, which is an Islamic-based insurance or an Islamic 
based Sharia compliant pension fund in which everything is halal. So if it's based on Sharia principle, you can keep the complete amount of pension. If it's involving riba, you get rid of that percentage and inshallah you can utilize the percentage which is free from riba. The next question is from Abdullah Muhammad from Bangladesh. Is beatboxing allowed in Islam? First, let us understand what is beatboxing. Beatboxing is a vocal percussion imitating the sound of the drum machine with your mouth, your lips, your tongue and your voice. This is there since a couple of centuries ago. It started since the 19th century, though the word was then called as beatboxing. Originally, beatboxing was imitating the drum machine. And later on, as time passed on, they started imitating the other musical instruments. And now, lately, almost all the instruments are imitated by the human vocal voice using the mouth, the tongue, the lips, and it was made famous in the 20th century in the late 1960s by the Beatles Paul McCartney. History tells us that even Michael Jackson made it famous and so on and so forth. To come to the question that is beatboxing permitted in Islam? Almost all the scholars they agree that musical instruments are haram in Islam. There are very few scholars that you may find lately or in the past that have permitted the use of musical instruments. There are various hadith which have prohibited musical instruments. I'll just quote you one which is very important. It's mentioned in Sai Bukhari, hadith number 5590 that our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that there will be among my followers some who will make illegal intercourse that is zina, adultery and fornication wearing of silk drinking of alcoholic drinks and the use of musical instruments as lawful as halal this is one of the signs of the hour before the day of judgment before the end of the world a prophet said this is the sign that there will be some people from his ummah who will make zina adultery fornication wearing of silk drinking of alcohol and the use of musical instruments as halal indicating that using musical instruments is haram the prophet only permitted certain times the use of duff that's an open ended drum in Eid or in weddings but generally all the other instruments are haram there are various fatwas since musical instruments are haram a human being imitating the haram musical instrument according to scholars is also haram and when Sheikh Utaymi was asked that is beatboxing permissible he clearly said even imitating the haram instrument the musical instrument with your mouth whether it be drums whether it be other instruments it is forbidden it is prohibited so beatboxing is not permissible for the muslims it is not allowed that a muslim should imitate the sound of the musical instrument whether it be drums whether it be other musical instruments with their sound this is haram and the Muslims should abstain from it. Even listening to it and even involving in making sounds of haram musical instruments with your mouth. The next question is from Sadiqur Rahman from Bangladesh. I am an architect by profession. Can I design a temple or a church or any other non-Muslim religious architecture. Also, while designing a five-star hotel, the client's requirement in most cases is to design a bar in it. What should I do in such a case? 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the glorious Quran in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 2, that help each other in bir and taqwa, in righteousness and in good deeds. But do not help one another in sin and in transgression. So Allah is very clear in the Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 2, that help each other in good deeds and in righteousness. But do not help each other in sin and transgression. Shirk is major sin in Islam. Allah says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Nisa chapter number 4, verse number 48, and Surah Nisa chapter number 4, verse number 116, that if Allah pleases, He may forgive any sin. But the sin of shirk, idol worship, He will never forgive. If you ask for forgiveness before dying, inshallah Allah will forgive you. But if you die as a mushrik, Allah will never forgive you. So in the religious places of the non-Muslim religious places, in temples and churches, but natural, there is shirk. There is idol worship. So how can you design a temple or a place of worship of the non-Muslim where other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worship? So in no way can you design or help in the construction of a place of worship of a non-Muslim. Neither can you give donation, neither can you support, neither can you be an architect, neither can you be a worker in the construction of any place of worship of the non-Muslim. Regarding the second part of the question, that in a five-star hotel, can you design a bar? All of us know that alcohol is prohibited in Islam. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Maida chapter number 5 verse number 90 Ya ayyuh al-lazina amun O you believe Innam al-khamru al-maysuru Most certainly in toxic interest and gambling Wal anzabu al-aslamu Dedication of stone, divination of arrows Rish sumaram ni shaitan These are Satan's handiwork Abstain from this handiwork that you may prosper Since alcohol is prohibited You as a Muslim cannot design a bar In which people have alcohol A bar is a place where people drink alcohol. You cannot design it. You can design a five-star hotel. If your client forces you to design, you said, no, I can design the complete five-star hotel, but I cannot design the bar. If he forces you, then don't take the project because designing a bar is also haram. It is prohibited. The next question is from Aman Kumar, Aman Kumar is a revert from Bihar, India. He's asking a question. I am from a Hindu family. I have converted to Islam one and a half year ago after watching your video and of Maulana Tariq Jamil Ji, which was explained by a Muslim friend of mine. But my family does not know this and they are skeptical. I tried to convince my family that the idol they worship is wrong, but they don't believe it. If I explain, then they say that is the whole world, in brackets Hindus, are they wrong? And are you the only one who's right? I also told them that it is okay, you do not listen to me, you read the Hindu religious book. It is written in it, but they do not even read it. And in the house of a Hindu who worships Murti idols, I feel that I have not done any shirk and that I have to go through a lot of hardships. So I want you to tell me what to do. Lastly, I would like to thank you for helping me recognize the truth and accepting Islam. I would like to thank you too, Brother Aman Kumar, for coming to the straight path and accepting Islam. May Allah reward you and may Allah bless you and may Allah grant you Jannah. As far as the question is concerned that when you tell to your family members and to your parents not to do idol worship, they say that are all the other people in the world wrong? Are the Hindus wrong? You should tell them that whatever majority people do is not always correct. Many centuries ago, most of the human beings believed that the world was flat. That does not mean that they are right. Today we know that the world is spherical. So majority is not always correct. People in the past thought that the light of the moon was its own light. Today we know after science has advanced that the light of the moon is not its own light. It is a reflected light of the sun. 
So just because majority people have a belief, that does not mean that the majority are always right. And if that is the argument that your family members are giving, that majority are Hindu, that's the reason, and they do idol worship, therefore you have to do idol worship, you have to tell your family members that in the world, the people that practice maximum any religion, number one is Islam. In senses, theoretically, maybe Christians are more. But the people who practice any religion, number one are Muslims. The number one religion which is practiced maximum in the world is Islam. There are more than 2 billion Muslims in the world. More than 26% of the world population are Muslims. Compared to Hindus, we are much more. Hindus are about 1.2 billion. So if you're going on majority, there are more Muslims in the world than Hindus. So does it mean if that is what you believe that more people are correct, then you should be a Muslim? As you ask the question that you're living in a Hindu family and they are not aware that you have accepted Islam one and a half year back, what should you do? Even though you're abstaining yourself from shirk, my advice to you would be that slowly and with hikmah, explain to your family about the haq, about the truth and reveal to them that you have accepted Islam. Initially they may be angry, they may be sad that they have accepted Islam, but that is the best because once you explain to them and reveal to them that you have accepted Islam, inshallah, inshallah, they will agree with what you have done. It will be easier for you to practice your deen. It will be also easier for you to convince them about Islam. And it will be easier for you to prove to them that what they are doing, idol worship, is wrong. It's a shirk. You can very well quote the scriptures. You can give them my cassette on similarities between Islam and Hinduism, where I've proved from their scriptures that idol worship is wrong. And inshallah, it will be easier for you to practice your deen and even get them to the straight path. So my request to you is reveal to them the favor of Islam with hikmah and continue your dawah with them. Inshallah, that will be the best for you. Next question is from Arif Ansari from Uttar Pradesh, India. One of my non-Muslim friends has asked me, all religions are superstitious and false. The truth lies in science, which is constantly developing. Religion says that God is all-powerful, merciful and all-good. If that is so, then why do millions of children in the world suffer from hunger, cold, etc. As the great Russian writer Dostoevsky asked in his famous novel, Brothers Karamazov, why does God, who is said to be merciful, not have mercy on them and give them food, clothes, shelter, etc.? Why is there so much poverty, unemployment, malnourishment, sickness, etc. in the world? If God is powerful and merciful, why does he not abolish these and give everyone a decent life? The question posed by the brother is that one of his non-Muslim friends is saying that all religions are superstitious and they are false. Science is ultimate and is always developing. I agree with the brother that most of the religions they are superstitious and they are false, but not all. Islam, alhamdulillah, is based on haq, on truth. As far as science is concerned, if you compare science with the religious scriptures of the various religions, I do agree with you that most of the religious scriptures, they will fail the test. But if you compare modern science with Quran, you will find out that there is not a single verse in the glorious Quran which is against any established science. There are more than 6,000 verses in the glorious Quran out of which more than a thousand speak about science. And there are many scientific facts mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago which was discovered recently, 30 years back, 50 years back, 100 years back, 300 years back. Now who can tell us how come the glorious Quran, 1400 years ago, mentions about these facts 
in biology, in zoology, in oceanology, in embryology, in medicine, in hydrology, which we came to know recently, 50 years back, 100 years back, 200 years back, about water cycle that every living creature is made from water. How was the creation of the universe, the Big Bang, and hundreds of things, which science came to know recently, 50 years back, 100 years back, 200 years back, 300 years back. The Quran mentioned 1400 years ago. How can you justify this? Out of more than 6,000 verses of the glorious Quran, more than a thousand speak about science. And not a single verse of the glorious Quran is going against established science. So if you compare Quran with modern science, Alhamdulillah, Quran is far superior. And science, as you rightly said, is developing. And many things what the Quran has mentioned, which science hasn't confirmed yet. But neither can it say it is wrong. Inshallah, in the near future, science will even confirm that. So Quran is far superior to science. But I do agree. If you compare with scriptures of other religions, all the other scriptures besides the Quran, they will fail the test. So Quran is a book based on haqq, on truth. Quran is not a book of science, S-C-I-E-N-C-E, -E, but it's a book of signs, S-I-G-N-S. It's a book of ayats. More than 6,000 ayats are there, signs are there, out of which more than 1,000 speak about science. Coming to the last part of the question, that why are millions of children in the world dying of hunger? Why is there suffering in the world? Why people are homeless? Why people are in pain and suffering? The reply to this question is, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Mulk, chapter number 67, verse number 2, Allazi khalaqal mawta wal hayata. It's Allah who has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. This life in the world is a test for the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent the human being on the face of the earth, has sent us as a test for the hereafter. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 155, Surely we will test you with something of fear and hunger, with some loss of lives and goods, and what you have earned through the toiling in the world, and give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere. That means Allah is saying every human being will be tested with fear and hunger, with the loss of goods and lives and your toils, what you have worked hard and accumulated. But give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere. As I mentioned, this life is a test for the hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests different human beings in different ways. Allah cannot have the same paper. The examination paper keeps on differing every year. So Allah tests different people in different ways. Some with wealth, some with health, some with poverty, some with diseases. So Allah is testing these people with hunger, with fear, with suffering. Do they yet have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There are some people whose children are born handicapped. The children are masoom, they are innocent. But it's a test for the parents. Well, Allah tests different people in different ways. And depending upon how will you react? Will you curse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Will you get angry with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or will you say, okay, amanna saddakna, I accept it. So this is a test. Allah is testing different people in different ways. Nowhere does it say that a person who will suffer in this world will go to hell. Nowhere does it say that people who are poor will fail in the test. In fact, it is easier for a poor man to go to Jannah than a rich man. Allah is testing. So if we have sabr, if we have patience, if we yet have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will be successful in the hereafter. So since this is a test, the atheists will not be able to understand because they don't believe in the Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But for a believer, for a moment, he realizes that this world, the life that we lead in this world, is a test for the hereafter. And we are here to pass this test. So with this way, inshallah, if you have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obey what is mentioned in the glorious Quran and the Sayyidi, inshallah, 
you'll be successful in this world.